Are the following compounds meso? Well, if you guys really want to know, I'll go ahead and explain the answer to this question right now. This question asks us to determine if each of these compounds is meso or not. So let's see if we can do that. Remember, a meso compound is any compound where you can draw a line down it and everything on one side of the line looks like the mirror image of everything on the other side of the line. This first one is hopefully pretty easy. I can just draw a straight line right down the middle of that, bisect that, and hopefully you can see, I know it's not drawn perfectly, but hopefully you can see that everything on the left side of that line, if it were staring in the mirror, would indeed see everything that's on the right side of the line. So even though technically you might look at these uh, carbon atoms here and be tempted to call them stereocenters, and I mean, I guess technically they kind of are, this molecule would not rotate plane polarized light. In other words, this molecule is achiral. Why? The reason is because it's meso. Why is it meso? Because you can bisect it, you can draw a line right down the middle of it. One side looks like the mirror image of the other, which means that it is meso. Let's take a look at this molecule. Is this molecule meso or is it not? Well, I mean, the way it's drawn, it doesn't really look meso. I mean, like if, for example, I draw a little line down there, the stuff that's to the left does not look like the mirror image of the stuff to the right, does it? It really doesn't. One thing I want you to remember, however, is this. Single bonds rotate, which means that this bond rotates right there. If you were to take this molecule and rotate it, you could actually rotate it just at this bond and have it indeed look like this. So I'm going to redraw this here. So what I'm trying to tell you is, once again, if you were to take this molecule and grab your bromine and rotate it down so that it were pointing three-dimensionally towards us, by doing that, it would place this hydrogen so that it were, was pointing three-dimensionally away from us, as seen here. And this CH3, this methyl group, would be in the plane of the board. Indeed, this is what that molecule would look like if you rotated this, just as I've described. Does this molecule look meso? Absolutely it does. You can uh, bisect it right there. Mirror image, uh, or sorry, the left half of this molecule looks like the mirror image of the right half, which means that this molecule is meso and is a chiral. Hopefully that makes sense. So the way it's drawn initially, it doesn't look a meso, but it totally is meso. All you have to do is have the ability to see that you can rotate around this thing and have it look like this molecule. And keep in mind, single bonds totally rotate freely unless they're you know, somehow twisted up in a ring or something. Uh, so this in, uh, indeed is, this compound is totally meso. Okay, let's take a look at this molecule right here. Can I bisect this with some line and have one half of the molecule look like the mirror image of the other? Well, I hope you guys can see that yes, I can. I can draw this straight line right down there. The left half looks like the mirror image of the right half. Is this compound meso? Absolutely, which means it will not rotate plane polarized light, which means that it is a chiral. How about this molecule over here? Well, if I try to draw a line right down the middle, you can see that because this chlorine is pointing away from us while this chlorine is pointing towards us, and the hydrogens are the opposites, the left half of this molecule does not look like the mirror image of its right half. Now, I told you with the example up here that single bonds rotate freely. Does this single bond rotate freely right here? It doesn't because it's in a ring. You can't really take that chlorine and rotate it around in some way because this ring constrains it. So this molecule is essentially locked more or less in the position that we see it. Is it meso? Well, the left half does not look like the mirror image of the right half, so it is not meso, which means that it is chiral, which means that it will rotate plane polarized light. In this first question, we're asked which of the following options do not show optical activity. In the case of option A, a pure mixture of R2 pentanol, what that's talking about is basically a solution where you just have R2 pentanol. That is a molecule that possesses a stereocenter. And if it were sitting in that solution in pure form, it would absolutely give you an optical rotation. Similar logic can be applied to option B. S2 pentanol. In option C, we're talking about a solution of one molar R2 pentanol and two molar S2 pentanol mixed together. Those are two enantiomers of each other, but in this case, I've got more of one, that is a higher concentration of S2 pentanol, than I have of the other 
Because that's the case, the excess amount of S2 pentanol will induce an optical rotation. So A, B, and C are all optically active scenarios. What about option D? Well, option D is where I've got a complete 50-50 mixture of 2 molar R2 pentanol and 2 molar S2 pentanol. Because they're present in a totally 50-50 mixture, called a racemic mixture, any optical activity induced by one enantiomer is canceled out by the optical activity induced by the other enantiomer. Hence, option D will show no optical activity and is, therefore, the correct answer. Turning our attention over here to this question, it asks us how many stereoisomers there are for this molecule. The answer to that question is D, 16. If you want to know why, I'll explain it to you right now on the board. This question asks us to determine how many different stereoisomers we could possibly have for this molecule. Now before we get into that, I want to throw a much simpler example at you. Let's pretend that I've got a nice, neat carbon stereo center that has four groups around it. One, two, three, four. It has one stereo center. <clears throat> you can quickly and easily draw its enantiomer. So how many different stereoisomers are there if you have one stereo center? Well, I could have one to the left and I could have one to the right. So if I have one stereo center, I can have two stereoisomers, two enantiomers. So I'll go ahead and write that, that down. One stereocenter equals two stereoisomers. Okay, let's imagine now that I've got a molecule that has two stereocenters. Okay, how many different stereoisomers could I have? Well, if you just look at one of these stereocenters and ignore the other one, I could have the, whatever configuration this is, if it's R, let's say, and I could have its opposite, S. So at this stereo center, I could potentially have two different configurations. I could have an R or an S. What about at this stereo center? Well, this stereo center, I could say the exact same thing. I could potentially have that be R or S. So what that means is that this molecule could exist as an R there and an R there. It could also be it's an antimer. It could be an S there and an S there. Or it could be an R here and an S there. Or it could be the opposite, an S there or an R there. So there are actually four different stereoisomers that I could get if I have two stereocenters. So let's write that down. Two stereocenters equals four stereoisomers. Are you guys seeing a pattern? The pattern is this. The number of total stereoisomers you can have is 2 to the n, where n is the number of stereocenters. Let's use that now and see if we can focus on this problem. This is a sugar, a beautiful sh uh, Fisher projection of a nice linear sugar. Keep in mind that every single one of these carbon atoms in the middle is a stereocenter because they're all bound to four different things. And, uh, in a Fisher projection, of course, these little lines represent three-dimensionally that those things are coming towards us while the stuff that's in the vertical axis is pointing three-dimensionally away from us. Those are totally stereocenters. Now, if you want to review a Fisher projection, I'll go ahead and post a link right here to an earlier lecture where I talk about that. So I've got one, two, three, four stereocenters. How many different stereoisomers could that possibly create or lead to? Remember this formula, two to the n. So I've got four different stereocenters. I put that up there. Two to the fourth is 16. I could have 16 different stereoisomers of this molecule. 